action. These two episodes, they're really raw. A lot of emotions are really raw. You see a lot of distinct feelings with all the actors of how people deal with, um, with suicide and loss. When I originally auditioned for the part, I had known one of the reasons I was submitted for it, they were like, oh, it's just going to be one season. And then progressively throughout the season, you find out that Cam is depressed and whatnot. So it was speculated on set whether it was going to happen or not, but it was a surprise to everyone when we came back from the hiatus, and that was the first script we reading, and then boom, it happened, and then everyone was just in shock. I think the best thing to do is we'll just start reading, and then we will be discussing uh, the read through that day, Linda Schuyler, she pulled me into her office and she was like, so listen, um, t at today's read through, um, I just want to let you know uh, this is the one where it happens. And, you know, again, like I knew it was coming, but I was still shocked. I was like, oh, really? Like, this is the one? And she was like, yeah, yeah, it's going to be this one. And she goes, okay, well, no one else knows, so don't say anything going into the room. And I was like, oh, I won't. Bittersweet Symphony, part one. Everyone picks up Bittersweet Symphony, and you know, we're going through it, we're going through it. All this crazy stuff happens in the first one, and then we get to the part two, and we start flipping through it, and it gets to this scene where Eli discovers the body, and the room fell silent, man. Everyone was like, and you can, I could feel the eyes on me, and I, I didn't look up, I didn't want to say anything. I had no idea, and I can't believe if Dylan knew this whole time, I don't know how he held it in. I would have told everyone. In the read through, I was like, it took me completely off guard. All of a sudden it was like the part in they, where they mention it for the first time. <laughs> my reaction was like, my hand was over my mouth and I was like, my next two lines were exactly what I was thinking, which was, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It appears as uh, he committed suicide in the greenhouse sometime overnight. He was found by a student about an hour ago. I couldn't believe it and I was sitting right beside Dylan and I was like, what? Like, how could you have kept that a secret this whole time as we were walking into the read-through you didn't tell me? It was hard when we first read it. I, I cried a couple times in the read-through. When I found out, my stomach was like, I couldn't breathe. I was like, oh my god, I was almost crying. I didn't expect it at all. It sparked like a like a 45 minute discussion almost afterwards. It was one of like the most like fruitful and, and in-depth conversations we've had after the read-through. I think the strongest part of these episodes is how it affects everybody else because I mean that is the, the key part of death is it really isn't about the person who's died it's about people who are left behind. I think it's incredibly realistic because everybody deals with death differently you know and everyone had a different connection with Cam Monroe's character you know he hit, it hits him hard he feels like death is just something that surrounds him all the time. It flashbacks a lot of bad feelings that he's felt before. Maya's character she's in denial for a lot of it. She doesn't really process it very well. So it feels horrible because he basically feels like it's, it's, it's his fault. You see everybody reacting in different ways with anger, with indifference, with sadness, with grief. It was just, it was, we thought everything was really well covered. And I think it's good for viewers to see the different kinds of grief that people can go through. Well, this is our 12th year of doing Degrassi The Next Generation. And I think every year we discuss the possibility of doing a suicide show. And it's, we've never found a way to do it that we feel could be completely responsible. And so until you can find a responsible way to do it, you don't do it. There's been lots of discussions with a um, psychologist um, who specializes in these issues for teenagers. So I really, I, I, I can't thank the writers enough, not just for the words that they put on paper for us, but the very responsible and conscientious research and background that's gone into to bringing this to us. It's sad. I'm going to miss Dylan. I mean, I'm glad the storyline happened. It just sucks that we have to lose such a good actor. As sad as it is to lose Dylan, I'm so sad. But it's a great storyline for him, and I'm really excited. I'm never letting you leave. Dylan oh, Everett, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. It was, it was awesome. It was amazing. And uh, I couldn't have asked for, for a better Degrassi experience. He doesn't punch himself. I can't. I don't understand. I can't do so it, man. Good. It's like you look at pictures of yourself and you're like, ugh. Yeah. I know. Well, especially pictures of you. Yeah. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> it's so funny, Mitch.